So the second thing I want to talk about in this lecture are uh, graphs. So this is the next subject uh, in the textbook. Uh, so I have two examples of a graph here. Uh, it's pretty intuitive what a graph is. You probably have a good intuition of it, even if you've never looked at it in a computer science, science context. Um, but a graph is it's very similar to a tree. In fact, a tree is a subset of a graph. A uh, tree specifically is a graph that only uh, where every node only has a single parent and there's some root node. Uh, but if we lift those restrictions, uh, then you get a more general kind of form of something. So graphs come in two main flavors. So there's undirected graphs, which is something like this. And there's a directed graph uh, where uh, the edges of the graph have arrows. So just to standardize some terminology, uh, the nodes in the graph we call vertex or vertices. Uh, sometimes they're called nodes. Uh, the thing that connects two nodes together or two uh, vertices together is called an edge. Uh, sometimes it's called an arc. Uh, so we'll try and use vertex and edge as our two standard uh, terms. Um, and so uh, your edge can be either undirected or it could be directed. So this is meant to model uh, flights. Uh, so these are airports. And so this is a directed flight. So if there's a flight that leaves JFK and goes to San Francisco, um, that's not the same as a flight going from San Francisco back to uh, JFK. Uh, this is meant to show people who have co-authored research papers or textbooks with each other. And so um, if one person is co-authored with the other, then the other has also co-authored with the other. Okay, uh, so this is a symmetric relationship. So we use an undirected graph. Uh, this is what we call an asymmetric information where uh, A going to B is not the same as B going to A. Okay, if we think of uh, graphs in terms of, of notation, what do we need to describe a graph? Uh, we need a set of vertice, vertexes, uh, vertices, and uh, we need a set of edges as well. Okay. Uh, and I use the term set loosely. Uh, later, we'll, there is some distinction between whether this is a collection of vertices or it's a set of vertices, but, but just completely set that aside for now. Uh, edges, uh, the way that we might note them is uh, we'll note uh, the two, basically the two vertexes that they, uh, the, or the two vertices that they uh, connect. Okay, so uh, if U is a vertex and V is a vertex in the graph, then we say uh, we define an edge as U comma V in brackets. And so that denotes that edge. Uh, and then the question is, is V U the same as U V? Uh, and so in the undirected case, they're the same. Okay, so this is U and V, the edge, it doesn't matter U to V or V to U, it's the same edge. Uh, but in the directed case, they're different, okay? Uh, so for example, um, the edge uh, here and the edge here are different edges, uh, even though they, they have the same endpoints uh, in terms of the edge, okay? Now it's possible to have a mixed graph uh, where some uh, edges are, are um, undirected and some of them are directed, uh, that's fine. Okay, and so I, I should also note, just in terms of a kind of road plan, for this lecture. This lecture is really just about collecting up a bunch of terminology. So we'll start using this terminology when we develop the algorithms and, and look at the Java data structures uh, for graphs themselves. But for now, it, we're just really concerned ourselves with, with what the different terminology is in terms of graphs. Okay, so here's, here's a, some more uh, terminology. Uh, let's say we have a node, uh, or sorry, a vertex. Take a vertex. Um, if there's an edge that's attached to that vertex, we say it's incident uh, to, that, to that particular vertex. Uh, similarly, if we consider a vertex, or sorry, if we consider an edge, the two vertex, the vertices that are uh, connected to that edge are called the endpoints of that edge. Uh, and in, in the case that it's directed, uh, the one uh, at the, the outgoing side is called the origin and the uh, endpoint uh, that's connected to the edge at the incoming side is called the uh, destination uh, for it okay and anytime you have two edges 
sorry, uh, two vertices that are connected by an edge, we say they're adjacent. Uh, so these are adjacent uh, vertices because there is an edge uh, that connects uh, the two of them. All right, the next concept uh, we'll consider is uh, something called the degree. Uh, so let's start here uh, by looking at this node. Uh, so we have Miami and we can see that uh, the number of edges that Miami has is four. Okay, there's two incoming edges and there's two outgoing edges. So the total number of edges we call the degree. Uh, so there's a degree of four. And then sometimes we wanna split uh, between incoming and outgoing uh, edges. So this is only relevant when you have a, a directed graph. Uh, but in that case, we might talk about the in degree uh, for it. Uh, so there's two incoming edges and there's two outgoing edges. So we call that the out degree. Okay, and then the total degree will be the sum of the in degree and the out degree. Um, so if we write the total degree uh, for all the nodes, uh, you can see that you know for, for this one it's two, for this it's four, for this one it's three, for this one it's five, for three and one. Okay, and it turns out that there's a nice uh, kind of mathematical relationship that talks about the total degree uh, for the entire chart or the entire graph and the number of edges that you have in a graph, okay? Uh, and so the, the key insight here is if we add an edge, so let's say we add an edge here, this, the degree of the one endpoint goes up by one and the degree of the other endpoint goes up by one. So every edge that you add adds two uh, to the total number of degrees across the chart. And that's true for every single edge. Uh, so it's the case that uh, the, the degree of uh, the, the entire graph will always be twice as big as the edge. Uh, so here, in terms of the number of vertices, if you count them up, you'll see that we have seven. Uh, if you count up the number of edges, you'll see that there's 11. And then the degree, if you add up all the degrees, including the four uh, that's uh, associated with this one, uh, you see that there's 22. 22 is double 11, and that's not a coincidence, okay? Uh, the other property that we have is for every edge, it's going to increase the in degree uh, of a node by one, and it's going to increase the out degree of a node by one. So it's going to, in so uh, in other words, um, for every edge, uh, there's one in degree and one out degree uh, that, that gets increased. Okay, uh, so the number of in degrees and the number of out degrees uh, or have to be the same. That would mean that you have some edge that, that is an in degree on, on both sides and not an, an out degree uh, on either side. So that's impossible, okay? Uh, so it will always be half. So uh, the total degree of the chart will always be twice the number of edges. Half of them will be in degrees and half of them will be out degrees. So that's what these, this second proposition says here. Uh, M in this case is the number of edges, okay? Uh, so the total degree of, if you add up the degree of every single node, uh, you get 2m. If you add up the in degree of all the nodes, uh, it's the same as the out degree of all the nodes, and it's the same as half of 2m, or just m, uh, in terms of m edges. Okay, and it's independent of v. Okay, so it doesn't matter. v could get bigger or smaller. Uh, this property only relates uh, the number of edges with the, the number of degree. The degree is only functionally dependent on the number of edges. Okay, another thing that we talk about is, uh, so I've added two lines uh, to this chart. Uh, so now uh, from Boston to Miami, uh, I added a second line. And so there's, this, there's different types of graphs uh, that will either allow this or disallow this. Okay, so in some cases it makes sense. So for example, there might be two flights, two different distinct flights from Boston to Miami. And so it makes sense to think about having two edges uh, that have the same endpoint, or in, in this case, because it's directed, they have the same origin and the same destination. Okay, uh, another kind of thing that, that might be possible that's, that's sort of uh, a generalization of that same principle is uh, you might have a self loop. Um, so you might have a node that points to itself. Uh, so it's both the origin and the destination for a particular edge, okay? 
So in this class, I think for all the algorithms, uh, I, I can't think of one where we don't make this assumption. We're going to assume that the graph is simple, which is basically says that there's no uh, no self looping and there's no parallel edges. Okay, so that's that's considered a simple graph, and and that's definitely the majority of the cases that we'll look at. Now this term simple can apply to the graph as a whole, uh, but it, it can also be, the term simple is sometimes used to refer to edges uh, and paths and, and other types of things uh, that, are, that are in the chart, or sorry, in the graph. So uh, you have to be careful with this term simple because it means a different thing when you're talking about a simple graph uh, as opposed to say a simple uh, path uh, within the graph. Okay, so let me denote that here that it's a simple graph. Okay, uh, some other terminology has to do with whether you can move from one node to another. Uh, so let's say that we start in Boston and you can see that there's a path, a directed path uh, that starts at Boston uh, and it ends here. So we say that these two nodes, um, first off, we, we call the, the, the trace uh, between them a path, and there might be more than one path uh, between any two nodes. And then what we'll say about this uh, destination node is that it's reachable, okay? So this is a reachable node. Uh, it's reachable uh, from this node in particular, or you might say that this node reaches this node, or this node is reached by this node, okay? And certainly if this is a uh, undirected graph, then both of them are true. Uh, if, if one reaches the other, the other reaches the other. Uh, but it's not necessarily the case in a directed graph. Okay. Um, and so we can think of a graph uh, where every node... Um, first off, if you think of a graph where uh, there, there's at least some edge between all the nodes, so you don't have like some node that's sort of sitting off on the side uh, that's not connected to anything else. We call that a connected graph. Um, so this is a connected graph. Uh, so every node there is at least some connection. Okay, and then sometimes we talk about a, a fully connected graph or a strongly connected graph. Uh, and that basically says that um, uh, for, for any two, take any two ver vertices uh, in your graph, uh, there is going to be a path that connects them. Okay, so every vertice is reachable from every other vertice. So that is not absolutely not true in this particular graph. So this isn't a fully connected graph. Uh, for example, there's no way uh, San Francisco doesn't reach, it doesn't reach anything. Some, some airports will reach San Francisco, but San Francisco itself doesn't reach anything else, okay? Um, and so there's also some mathematical properties that we'll get into in terms of how many edges do you need to have a fully connected graph and, and, and that type of thing. Okay, another uh, concept we have are cycles. Uh, so a cycle is a path in a graph where uh, the origin point and the destination point is the same node. Um, now, let me actually just backtrack quickly. I forgot to mention that we call this a simple path because every vertice along the path is unique. Okay, you could have a not simple path where it might visit uh, the same vertice more than once, okay? Uh, so a simple path, uh, you just visit every single vertice once, uh, every, every vertex once. Uh, if you have a cycle, uh, obviously there's one vertex that you're visiting twice uh, to complete the cycle. And so a simple cycle says that that's the only vertex, vertex that you visit twice, okay? So you're allowed to visit one twice, which is where you start and where you end. But other than that, um, uh, you don't, revisit the same vertex twice uh, in terms of, of the cycle itself, okay? And it has the same starting point and the same end point. Uh, and so we call that a cycle. Um, now, not all graphs have cycles. Uh, and so uh, a graph that doesn't have a cycle is called acyclic. And it turns out that for some algorithms, you can think if you're going to kind of traverse this graph, I mean, that's an, algorithm, an obvious algorithm that we're going to want to develop. Cycles are going to be kind of problematic because if you if you traverse, you might just end up looping, you know, forever. And so um, traversing a graph is going to be easier. It's certainly going to be easier in an acyclic case. Um, uh, another important concept is if you have something that's both directed and it's acyclic, 
so there's no cycles and um, it's a directed graph. Uh, these are called DAGs, uh, directed acyclic graphs, and they're they're very important in computer science and there's lots of applications of them and we're going to develop uh, a couple algorithms that are specific uh, just to this subcase. So this is not a DAG. Uh, it is a directed graph. It's just it's just not acyclic. Uh, we could make it acyclic uh, if we wanted to, but we would have to remove some of the edges. So for example, uh, if we remove the edges in blue, uh, then this end result, uh, you can sort of stare at it for a few minutes, but you'll convince yourself that it is actually acyclic. So there's no uh, cycles uh, in terms of this. So this, this graph with these uh, four blue edges removed is a DAG. Okay, one last piece of terminology. Um, so th there's a bunch of things uh, here, trees, forests, connected, uh, subgraphs. Uh, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to sort of start uh, backwards and, and work uh, my way forward. Um, so the first thing is just look at this chart. So let's go back to the undirected case. Uh, so this is an undirected graph. And what you can see is that I've highlighted uh, some vertexes, vertices, and some edges. And uh, these are all uh, this is a subset. It's a, a strict subset of the full graph. Okay, so uh, what I have is a subset. Uh, so subsets of a graph are called subgraphs. Okay, so I have a subgraph. I've included every vertice uh, that was in the the original um, in the original uh, graph. Okay, uh, so we call that a spanning subgraph. Okay, so this is a spanning subgraph because uh, I dropped edges. Uh, so uh, you have to drop something, otherwise it wouldn't be a subgraph. So if you only drop edges and you don't drop uh, any of the vertex, uh, any vertex, then it's uh, going to be a spanning subgraph. Okay. Um, the other thing about this particular spanning subgraph uh, is that it's connected. Okay. So every single uh, vertex that's in this spanning subgraph uh, is connected. It's connected exactly once uh, to uh, to every other node okay and so this we call a spanning tree okay so when we have all these properties and we sort of put them together uh, we call it a spanning tree and there's going to be some mathematical relationships that, that you can ignore for now we'll go, we'll go to them in a second um, where it defines how many edges that you would have to have in order to have a spanning tree once you know the number of vertexes that you want Okay, now there's a couple related uh, concepts. Um, so if this is a tree, then what we might do is we might drop an edge. Let's say we drop this edge here. Okay, if we drop this edge here, what ends up happening is we have a tree up here and uh, another tree down here and they're kind of disconnected. Okay, so it's, it's not a connected uh, data structure anymore. You kind of have one subtree down here and you have another or yeah, and another subtree up here, okay? Uh, so we call that a forest, okay? Uh, and then the other thing is we might add edges, okay? So we get a forest, uh, if we start with a tree, we get a forest by removing edges. If we keep removing more edges, uh, it turns into what we call a forest. And if we add edges, so if we start with a tree and we add another edge, now it's no longer acyclic, okay? So now uh, you might have cycles uh, that are involved. Uh, and as soon as you add edges and add cycles, uh, it's no longer a tree. And so we just say it's connected. Okay. So um, let's uh, go to the, to the actual de definition. Um, so a graph is not connected. Uh, it has a bunch of connected components. Okay. So there's, there's a bunch of subgraphs. They're not connected to each other. They're just sort of floating independently of each other. So those are the connected components. Okay. Uh, a forest is a graph uh, that doesn't have cycles, and then a tree is a forest that's also connected. Uh, so it's a connected graph without cycles. Uh, and then a spanning tree is a tree uh, that touches every vertex. Okay, so it, um, all the vertices of the graph are included in this particular tree. Okay, uh, so if you have a tree, you have no cycles. Uh, if you add edges, you add cycles, but it's still connected because the tree's connected. If you add edges, it's still going to be uh, full or it's still going to be connected. Um, 
and if you remove edges then it might not be connected now if there's no cycles and you remove edges you're not going to introduce a cycle because you're just removing edges you'd have to add edges to add a cycle so um, if if it's a tree and you remove edges then you get a forest and if the tree has no cycles then the forest also doesn't have cycles okay and then conversely if it's a tree and you add edges then you have to add a cycle uh, so then it's going to turn into a connected node okay um, so the final thing we'll, we'll think about is uh, how many for, for these different types of, of uh, subgraphs, uh, how many vertices do we have relative to the number of nodes? So in a tree, you can see that, pretend gold rich, uh, I'll say one other thing. Um, so uh, the tree here uh, is a little different than we talked about trees before. Uh, so the trees we talked about before, first off, they could be binary trees. So this is certainly not a binary tree. It would be a general tree because the number of children uh, is different, but this concept of children implies that there's a root somewhere, right? So I keep hovering around gold rich as if it's the root of the tree because when I look kind of visually at it, I my eye sort of thinks of this as the root, but there's no reason that that has to be the root of the tree, right? Chiang could be the root of the tree, uh, and then this would still be a tree uh, going down here, okay? Um, so this is, uh, so in graphs, when we have a subgraph that has this tree property, it's very similar to the kinds of trees we studied before. Uh, the only difference is that there's no defined vertex that's the root of the tree, okay? So sometimes we call it a free tree as opposed to a rooted tree. So a rooted tree were, you know, binary search trees and heaps and, and the other kinds of trees that we looked at. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's just a small technicality, okay? Now, let's think of, let's still actually think of it as more of a proper tree. So let's think of Goldrich as kind of the root of the tree. Okay, so we start with one node, um, uh, which is the root of the tree. Then notice that for every other node that we add, we also have to add a vertice, right? So as soon as we add uh, this vertex, sorry, for, for every vertex we add, we have to add an edge. So if we add this vertex, we need an edge to go with it. If we add this vertex, we need an edge to go with it. If we need this, if we add this vertex, we need an edge to go with it. So you start with the root, the root is free, and then for every additional node that you add, uh, you're also going to add an edge, okay? So how many edges are there? If there's n nodes, there's going to be n minus one edges, right? You won't add an edge just for the root, but for every other edge, the n minus one uh, rest of the uh, nodes that you add, you're going to have to add an edge for them, okay? So in a tree, uh, we have this property that uh, the number of edges is going to be uh, the number of nodes minus one, okay? Then if we want to turn it into a forest, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting off some of these edges. So the number of edges are going to go down, okay? So it'll be less than or equal to n minus one. And if we want to make this connected and introduce loops, uh, then we're going to add edges to it, okay? So the way I like to think of it is, um, actually, I'll, I'll get to the way I like to think of it in a second. There's, there's one other property. So let's say that we consider G as a connected graph, okay, meaning that we'll tolerate cycles. Uh, then M is some is greater than N minus one. And so the question is how big can M get? What's the upper bound on M, okay? Uh, and so there's another proposition that we can look at, uh, which talks about how big M can get. So if M is going to be a simple graph, meaning that you're not going to have, if it's not a simple graph, you could have an infinite number of edges that link two vertexes. So the number of edges could be infinite. Uh, but if it's a simple graph, that is a, the rule that says that uh, between any two vertexes, there's at most one edge if it's undirected, or there's two edges, you know, going from here to here and from here to here if it's a directed uh, graph, okay? So the, the most number of edges that we could have in a graph is when every node is connected to every other node. So that's a fully connected graph, okay? And the number of nodes uh, that we have in a fully directed graph is, uh, if, it's, if it's a directed graph, uh, if it's fully connected, it's going to be n times n minus one, okay? So that's uh, every single node connected to every other node in the graph besides itself because soft uh, loops aren't allowed in a simple graph, okay? So every node, so there's n of them with an edge to every other node except for itself 
so n minus 1 other nodes. So uh, you get n times n minus 1. Okay, if it's undirected, uh, then every node, uh, once you connect A to B, then B is connected to A. Uh, so you can cut out half of your, your connections. Uh, so you get n times n minus 1 over 2. Okay, uh, and notice that these statistics are only for undirected graphs. They're not for, for directed graphs. Um, so the, this is the way I like to think of it. So you can think of, you have a bunch of edges in your simple graph. Okay, so you have a simple graph, no self loops. Uh, you don't have more than one edge uh, between two nodes. So we have a simple graph. And the number of edges can go anywhere from one to, uh, if it's undirected, uh, n times n minus one over two. Uh, so let me specify undirected. Okay, so the, the least number of edges you could have is one. The most number of edges you could have is n times n minus one over two. Somewhere in between them, uh, you have n minus one. And when you're sitting right at n minus one, the result is a tree. Uh, if you're somewhere between less than n minus one, so somewhere between one and n minus one, you have a forest, which is a set of disconnected trees. Uh, and if you're between n minus one and uh, the upper bound, uh, you're connected, and when you reach the upper bound exactly, you're fully connected. Okay, um, so this is sort of uh, the sort of the the time or the the sort of spectrum of the number of edges you could have, and then what kind of class of subgraph you would have, uh, depending on how many edges you have. Okay, so. Um, anyway, so, so this is uh, a bunch of terminology. It's just going to bring us up to speed. Uh, so then in the next lecture, which uh, we'll go back to an in-person lecture on Friday, uh, what we'll do is we'll start talking about the data structures and the algorithms, and we'll have this kind of terminology in place. I know it's a lot to sort of absorb, and so I'll try and remind you what uh, all the terms mean uh, as, we, as we start dealing with them. And you'll get very used to them, like when we start computing, for example, minimum spanning trees, you'll see spanning trees so often that, that you'll immediately uh, sort of, um, it will solidify exactly what uh, this terminology uses. So some of these are, are really important concepts like trees and connected, things like forests, you know, we talk about it in this proposition, but we don't really talk about it, or self loops or, or things like that. Um, so uh, you'll get a feel for, for which, what of this terminology is important and what isn't. But anyways, this is sort of, uh, a lecture that you can go back to uh, as a reference uh, next time that you want to look up what a particular term means.